freaking Friday. Um, you guys see in the title, Are You Afraid of Success? Are you afraid of success? Now, if you're anything like me, when I used to hear that all the time, and I would say, like, why would people be afraid of success? Like, I'm not afraid of success. I want what's at the, at the next level. So I never really understood what people meant by asking, are you afraid of success? Until more recently. And I want to talk about it with you on today because I, I think that oftentimes we are talking about next level and we say we want next level and maybe we don't know that there's something on the inside of us that's actually holding us back from that next level. And I want to see if we can identify or I want to see if maybe for you it's the same thing that it was for me, that I realized that it was for me. Um, if this is your first time joining us, say hello. If you're catching us on the replay, say hello. Um, thank you for stopping into the Renew community. If this is not your first time, put hashtag Renew in the comments. That's what we do around here. We renew our minds back to the space of um, abundance, peace, love, joy, all the things that I believe God, our creator, really intended for us to be, um, for us to have uh, abundance and prosperity and peace in our lives. And sometimes we kind of lose our way. So we do a lot of renewing around here. It's also the name of my consulting business. I am a master life and business coach and I help women just like you step into their personal power, scale their businesses to six and multiple six figures, all while creating a lifestyle they love. I do it by three ways um, or three concepts and that's abundance mindset, personal growth and business building, I believe. When you have tapped into all three of them, you have tapped into a realm of impossibility. And so today we're talking about the fear of success. Are you afraid of success? So many of the clients who come to me for work in this season, most of them need to um, raise their prices. Give me a second, guys. Let me grab this phone and see if I can turn this volume down because it's doing everything <laughs> now that I'm online. <clears throat> but many of the women who are coming to me in this season, 95%, 99% maybe, really need to embrace raising their prices. And I hear a lot of the hesitation in raising their prices. So um, some of it is fear that they'll lose the current clients that they have. Um, they may say that some of the clients that they already have make little suggestions about how they wouldn't, you know, still be around if prices went up or if this changed. All the little hints, you know, that people may have dropped who have been your previous clients or your current clients could be the very reason why there may be a level of fear as it relates to increasing your prices and really charging the value of the services that you're providing. I remember there was a time when I first started entrepreneurship. So I've been doing this over 25 years now. I owned a brick and mortar service based business for a decade, a successful brick and mortar service based business for a decade prior to coaching and consulting. And prior to that, I was self employed. So I had a skill set. Um, I serviced people and I rented a space in order to operate and do that from. And I remember early on when I was building my clientele, I remember my mentor sharing with me that my clientele was a reflection of who I was. And so I heard her, didn't pay any attention. You may have heard a part of this story somewhere down the line. I didn't pay a lot of attention, but two to three years later I did when I began looking at the client tell that I currently had at that time and realized that some of the behaviors of those clients, some were canceling and not calling or, you know, scheduling appointments, not making their appointments, uh, being overly late. And I worked like I took clients every 30 minutes. Uh, and then I took a break after the third person. So I was relatively busy. And so for a person to be late or cancel, you know, it really threw things off and it began to be frustrating. So I remembered, I heard that voice of my mentor saying, your clientele is a reflection of who you are. 
And it was at that moment that I realized there were some things that I needed to do differently. So at that time, I, I began really tapping back into some foundational things, believe it or not, that my parents had talked to me about. I changed my conversation and my clientele changed. And I remember as my clientele began to change, I began serving um, women who were attorneys wives or they were attorneys themselves, women who owned businesses. They were head of the financial uh, department for large institutions like hospitals and corporations. And um, I served some really um, influential people within the community and within their job, the scope of jobs that they, they did. And I remember having this thought prior to that transitioning happen, happening, that transition of my clientele changing happening. I remember thinking, number one, that I wasn't good enough to service this next version of people. Now, I didn't know who I was calling in by changing some of my behaviors and um, my conversation. I didn't know exactly who I was calling in at that time. I knew I was calling in people with certain characteristics. They were timely. They could afford my services, uh, things of that nature. But, you know, I didn't know they would have all these titles and positions that they held within the community or even in our world space. So I didn't know that. So as my clientele began to change and they began to come in, I remember at certain times initially being fearful. And I remember thinking I wasn't um, qualified to service them. Now, it's funny when you say qualified because the skill set that I was doing, I did really well. I came highly referred. Um, I was skilled and had cultivated my skill set. I was good at that, but in my mind, there was something fearful about serving women who I felt were at this different level. Y'all stay with me, okay? Because I believe that some of the reason why, even if you started having the higher priced products and services, that you're unable to fulfill them, you're unable to call those people in, is because some of the things that some of the inner work, right, that's actually transpiring on the inside that you may not be aware of. And this is a great time here to say, this is why I invite you all into my She Prospers 30 Day Mastermind, which is inner work about mindset and tapping into abundance and all of those things, right? Uncovering limiting beliefs. But some of the reason why there may be a hesitation to people actually coming in, even if you begin charging premium products, but you're not having this influx of people, there are probably some things within the inner work realm that need to be worked out. So I share this because I, as I was saying, I had like this fear. And at first, I, I don't know any other way to say this. I was attaching some of the fear to money. Where, what I mean by that is I felt that these, um, clients made so much more money than me and I just was wasn't worthy this may be crazy um, some of you may resonate with this if you really think about it some of you may not but this is where I was I'm 20 some years old at the time maybe uh, late 20s and then I realized you guys hear me on this I realized that I made sometimes double and triple what those same women who had degrees, and, and I think, you know, I was equating it to them having like a degree, although I'd gone to college, I didn't finish. I think in my mind, I was equating it to degrees and money and all of these different things. And then I learned that I was actually earning sometimes three times more than, than they were as a business owner. Um, and then I realized that even beneath all of that, See, it's layers to these different beliefs that we have that we don't even know we have, right? But even beneath all of that was, I had a fear that they would expect more. Anybody else? Anybody else? Like one of the reasons why you really won't charge what your products and services are worth because you feel the people who you'll call in will require more of you. Lord, y'all don't hear me. 
And the crazy thing is, I was already disciplined. I was already disciplined as it related to business. But what happened, the shift that happened was, I now became even more aware of how disciplined I was. Because irregardless of how we slice it, when people pay more, they have an, a higher expectation. It doesn't mean they're pickier though. That's what you guys got to understand because a lot of times they're the easiest and simplest to serve. They just want the value, right? And if you've got the systems and things that are in alignment for them and it's moved there, listen, and then you learn over time that they like to laugh and cut up and all of these things and thoughts and limiting beliefs that sometimes we create in our own mind or someone else has told us that aren't even true will keep us from doing the things that get us to the next level. One thing I do understand is when people pay more for something, they are more likely to be mindful with it. It's, it's of more value to them. So even in coaching and consulting, you know, the, the things that I was doing for $97 that some people never even looked at them. Not that it wasn't just as valuable as some of the things I do now, but in the, it wasn't a big enough investment. I've had people, some people will pay thousands. And depending on what is a big enough investment for them, sometimes that determines whether or not they actually do the work and get the results. But many of the fears that people really have are embedded as it relates to really charging more for their products and services. This is why we, I talk about limiting beliefs and things that you're unaware of and when you uncover them and you tap into them it helps you to tap into new spaces of abundance if this is you if this is registering to you I have two opportunities for you one of them you can choose where you feel you are and what you need the most number one is my she prosperous 30-day mastermind I honestly feel regardless of where anyone is everybody should take that I have two courses that I feel everybody should take you know I could be biased right but because it's a mindset shift regardless of whether you're on the cut you're at 70 some thousand trying to get to your six-figure mark or you're already at six figures going to your multiple six figures or if you've already reached seven figures I've worked with some seven figure um, business owners who needed mindset shifts the she prospers mastermind is going to be powerful for what it is that you're wanting to do that may not be transpiring the way you want it to or even if you just desire more you may not know what that looks like yet but you know that belief is a is a huge part of you getting whatever that next thing is the she prospers mastermind i'll leave that in the comments i work with you every sunday we do live coaching and then there are activations that you do every day for 30 days they're simple activations that you do that are impactful and transformational and that one's on mindset and abundance and then there is the perfect people framework i only have two spaces available for that i'd open three i have two left and it's something i created It's normally inside my programs where i'm working with private clients for extended amounts of time but i decided to open them up as a session just to see how it goes because so many people are uncertain about who their perfect people are right that that perfect person that's actually going to do business with them that find value in their services um, who will buy for them who is in alignment with who they are as a brand and where they desire to go because people have been throwing spaghetti on the wall on the social media thing and not converting the clients in ways that they desire and this sometimes makes them feel like what they're offering isn't of value. If that's you, you'll work with me for 14 days on defining who your perfect people are. There is a live component to it, and then the rest of it is digital um, coaching where you can ask me questions and I answer you throughout after we work on the strategy um, live and you answer the questions and all of those things. And so I will leave those two opportunities um, in the comments but if that's you if maybe you have been a little afraid of success and you, you didn't know that that's what was happening you didn't know that there was fear or beliefs behind what it is that you're wanting to build even if it's 
raising your prices. There's so many different aspects of building a business and areas of building a business where those little nasty limiting beliefs can hide. Uh, the the disbelief can be really subtle because we're saying one thing out of our mouth, but what's inside our subconscious programming, which is what has been uh, developed over time into a mindset that we may not even recognize, right? In that subconscious program programming, that's where we're actually living our life out from, not necessarily from what we're saying, because we can say one thing and that subconscious programming is saying something completely different. Our thoughts control our feelings. Our feelings control our emotions. Our emotions control our actions. And our actions control our results. That's my take. Um, are you afraid of success? I didn't, when people used to ask that, I was like, I don't know exactly what they mean because no, I'm not afraid of success. I want what's at the next level, right? But are there parts of the process that you haven't identified yet? that are actually limiting beliefs that are keeping you from that. So as within, so without. There's no way to circumvent um, your beliefs. Like you can maybe cause it to happen one time, but we always go back to what our set place is. And that's like our money ceiling or the actual belief that we really have like we'll have that measure of success and go back to it until we've tapped into a new trajectory that allows us to normalize a new frequency, right? Because whatever it is that you desire is at a certain frequency. It's at a certain vibration and a certain level. And you can fluctuate in between where you are and where that frequency exists on and it causes instability. It causes you to tumble back down until you have actually normalize um, yourself at that new vibration. I'll go more into those things inside the She Prosperous 30 Day Mastermind. I'd love for you to join us. Um, there's like a day left for you to join us inside of that. We coach every Sunday for the next four weeks. And I think it may say Saturday, but it's every Sunday. Um, and I'll correct that for the next four weeks and you get